Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We're going to start today's episode by having a teeny tiny bit of a project, a villager trading hall. And I have been thinking maybe it should be a bit wider. Yep, it's frowned upon to put your prisoners, I mean your co-workers, in a confined space. I believe something like this is fine and you should all be happy because you get to see my beautiful eyes. Mesmerizing. No, I had to bring more villagers. That one is suffocating. Because, you know, the thing is, uh, we were out of spawn eggs. And yes, you might notice this is a pneumatic trading hall. Apart from the lecterns. I need name tags. And of course, I'm going to need some pneumatic stuff. I don't know at which point you're going to sell me something useful, but I hope you do it faster. Because I don't need that many tubes. I have been trying to do some gizmos, and unfortunately, we have a problem. I need flights. A bit, just for building. If that is the case, uh, let us try and make an angel ring. In this version of Minecraft or all the mods, the angel ring has changed. It's now called angel ring 2. What does it mean? It just means that the most amazing thing about it is now gone. It used to be free. Now you either have to spend experience or power. We go with power. That took a bit of crafting, but here is the angel ring. This one works with experience and this one works with RF. So can I fly? Nice. What we are interested in at this very moment is the finished PCB from our villagers, correct? This one. Obviously, it is something relatively easy to craft, but if we manage to get it from villagers, we're gonna leap forward by quite a bit. The problem is Mr. World Shaper, you're not giving me that. So you come with me, stay in this very safe chamber, and I shall flick the lever for you. Thank you. Welcome to the club. Let us hope your substitute is going to do a better job. Mr. Brighton. It's okay, Brighton. I know you start with a canister, which is fine. No pressure. You should feel lucky today. I like drones. I also like missiles. Good job. Oh, but I'm very sorry. We're stuck at drones. It's a shame. My dear is Brighton. Oh, okay. We're going the correct direction. Don't you worry, Brighton. If you stay in this chamber, I will be honored. Thank you, that is cryofuel, and I like it. Oh, and obviously, welcome to the club. My dearest Maria, let's hope you do better. It's okay, air canisters are useful. Capacitors and transistors, of course. We're doing good. I love drones, obviously. Oh, I like this one. Armor piercing. Ah, oh, I need one more? Okay, I will do that. Oh, finished PCB. Thank you. My dearest Lord Precise, it's your turn. Gaze into my eyes. No need to panic. What can go wrong? Oh, drones. Aha, uh -huh. you come with me. My dearest Ashop, thank you for the PCBs. They're very handy. So don't mind if I buy more. Thank you. I was tired of interrogating the prisoners. I meant trading with my colleagues. So I told myself, let us work a bit on our control room. But just a bit. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering, the prisoners are here. I meant the colleagues. And for the moment, this is going to be our control panel. And yes, of course, it's purple. What did you expect? However, when I was working on that room, I realized we're missing a few bits and pieces. And apparently I have no idea it's nighttime. A few episodes ago, we did disassemble our mob farm and added a few more mobs. For example, guardians, spiders. And I thought there's going to be more, but no. Ooh, guardians give you fish. That's nice. Anyways, what I wanted to mention is that uh, we need a few more mobs. Ironically, one of them is a squid. I'm short of black dye. And the other one is going to be a cow. I wanted to have a dedicated cow farm, but let us face it, it's been 10 episodes. So I'm not gonna make it. And of course, hopefully the final one is going to be a warden. Show your face. I'm making noises. Now, takes time. Are they like super scared and they don't spawn anymore? Uh -huh. Yeah, you're sniffing me. I'm also sniffing you. Where are you? That way? Oh, he's up there. Okay, come with me. Hello. And bye bye. Let us put them inside drawers. Here is the cow. Good. Hello, Prince Thomas. I don't really want the squid to take damage because, uh, well, if we put him inside the containment jar, then he might turn red. That's the wrong one. You're the squid. Yes. And the warden. Nice. Our dearest friend, Frozen, mentioned that it's a shame that the warden died and he never joined the graveyard. So there you go. There's the warden. And he shall have a grave. It has been a while that we're collecting different mobs inside jars and... Well, I never managed to get the big one. Oh, that's one of the reasons. We don't need that many dragon eggs. Oops, I'm wasting them. So let's try to catch her and see what happens. Maybe we should poke her once, you know, so that she actually lands. 
hopefully you're going to join us down there because there's nothing up there she arrived nice oh we got her awesome i like thunderstorms let's see what you're gonna drop <laughs> it's so tiny i thought she's not there i don't think she's gonna drop anything maybe dragon breath just before we move on underground there are a few things that i want to do above ground in the village the first item on the list was an automatic source generator this is exactly the same thing that we made in stone blocks but with mycelial generators and you know with a much bigger buffer they also had a thermal expansion and i was playing around with the crops it's fun we will do that later on don't you worry but another problem that i have is lag and it's getting very irritating so i thought what i should do is that we should install switches to turn off everything in our world for the mob farms it's relatively easy all you have to do is that you just have to add a comparator but for create i thought we should add a clutch also one thing that i realized is that if you run pipes into conveyor belts that's also going to cause lag the reason that we are doing all of this is that i don't really want to abandon this world just because of lag so far i had to abandon all the mod 6 all the mod 7 all the mod 3 and yeah it's not the best lag is really not going to go away but if we manage to keep it above 60 fps i'll be happy and you might notice i have been preparing for this and where i have been preparing for this a very good question over here in our basement with screens from rf tools this is going to be a giant mess of redstone stuff uh, so i thought we'd do it underground the first item on the list is going to be the create farm itself that was a redstone receiver from RF Tools, and this is a button. We link them together, and if we press the button, that one will be activated. So, you go in there, we shall call you Create Factory, and it's on toggle. Meaning that it's going to act like a lever. That redstone receiver is going to activate a redstone link from Create, and we should be able to put one on each and every clutch. Precisely, everything is off, and that's what I wanted. Except the star bunkers, but those are fine. They're cute. Would you please stop raining? Also, I think for the create factory, what we need to do is that we need to invert the signal. Because, for example, if I want to get frog lights, I need to give a redstone signal to that spawner over there so that it's going to spawn magma cubes. So that is redstone on. These spawners are the same deal. However, with the create factory, whenever it's on, the factory is off. And we want to be able to keep everything standard, which I believe is something super easy to do. We need a repeater, a torch, and a redstone link obviously with the same frequency now that we inverted it that should be active yeah okay we should be able to make the screen a bit bigger so that you can also see what i'm doing it has been a while later and i have hooked up every single farm that we had to redstone and everything is off and the lag is way better like way way better also the stupid ender dragon does not drop anything so let's take it to the office you know at least we have something to watch anywho let us get back to pneumatic craft uh, what we need is oil i can go and gather oil manually but apparently we can use a drill oh that's nice and i think we should have enough space over here yeah i do have space for one more drill well it does help if you read the tooltips because you can find oil in oceans and in deserts you know it does say ocean between Y level 20 and 60. So we are at 30, we have a black laser lens and well, nothing. And this is an ocean. Yeah, there was another issue with the configs, but we have oil, that is lava. Oil is channel 100? Yes, perfect. I broke the door. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, the hitboxes are weird. Of course, just to clarify, we didn't have to go with oil. We could have gone with diesel. And obviously by diesel, I meant biodiesel. That also gives you plastic. But for some reason, I thought maybe it's going to be fun to use some kerosene lamps. You can power it using any type of fluid, but we want to use kerosene. Actually, let us give it a test. It's not that bad, and it has a massive range. You can increase the range. Wow. I like that. It does eat through the fuel though, but this is oil. It's garbage. Whenever you're processing oil in pneumatic craft, there are four outputs that you're going to get. Diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG, correct? So if we want to have a refinery, it should have four outputs. And yes, today is going to be the day of achievements. The refinery itself is going to require heat, so we are going to use a vortex tube, and the red side should touch the refinery. Like so. A heat sink? Oh, and by the way, before we start blowing up the base, uh, let us get some security upgrades. It's not called security? Yes. What this does is that it's going to prevent machines from exploding. Because we're not going to use any compressor, we're going to use a flux compressor. That's a bad idea, right? We do have some advanced tubes, yeah. Because this guy can make like 20 bars, and that's a bit. Anyways, here is your power. Oh, it's that way. But yeah, now that we are providing pressure to the vortex tube, the temperature is rising. Very slowly. 
These guys are great if you have speed upgrades. Without them, they're not the best. But I believe if we give you some oil, after you reach 100 degrees, you're going to start processing it. Also, another thing that we should remember is that the compressor is going to generate a lot of heat. So I believe we can get rid of that heat by having a block of compressed iron and some heat sinks. That should reduce it. Uh, this is going to be temporary until we get more compressors and more tubes. Otherwise, yeah. I know it's garbage. You see, the temperature is dropping. It was 43, now it's 42. Also, insulating your refinery is not the worst idea ever. And by insulating, you just have to place blocks. You can also put it in the front. You know, it does tell you that it's fully insulated. I know, but we are almost there. Come on. We just reached 100 and we have diesel, kerosene, gasoline and LPG. The temperature is dropping, so I think we need one more compressor too. And once we get our first speed upgrade, life is going to be great. I added an extra compressor, I covered the front and, well, now it's not that bad. Let us get that stupid lubricant first. Or actually, maybe we just get plastic and buy it from the Amadron tablet? Yeah, that's easier. The more heat we have in the refinery, the faster it's going to work. Uh, I think one heat sink is not going to be enough. What if we put a block of compressed iron like so, and you know, add more sinks? I think it's affecting the hot side. We're at 160 degrees. Anyways, what we need is LPG inside the thermoneumatic processing plant. So there you go. And unfortunately, this one also needs heat. Just out of curiosity, yeah, we just need 7 plastic. Oh, a bit more. 11. Which we can make 21, that's good. Basically, what I want to know is that, uh, can we cheat and, you know, put lava instead of heat? Holy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> if that is the case, we give you some LPG and some coal. Oh, you need pressure. <laughs> my bad. Here is your pressure. Have fun. Do you have any idea why it's not working? That is gasoline. Yeah, that one was LPG. So here's the problem. Every once in a while, that lava is going to turn into obsidian. So you have to reheat it. But very good, we have molten plastic, which converting it into plastic is relatively easy. You just place it on the ground and voila. And ladies and gentlemen, this is called cheaty plastic. Thank you. If we manage to charge it by a teeny tiny bit, we should be able to get our lubricant. Most of you already know how the Amadron tablet works, but for those of you who don't know, you just need a tank, a barrel, and everything that you're going to purchase from the Amadron tablet is going to have a price. The price goes inside the barrel. You select the barrel, you select the tank. Oh, it does select it. Okay. Wasn't showing up. And then what we want is some lubricant. So uh, someone should come and take our emeralds jerk. <laughs> I love them. And hopefully someone is gonna bring the lubricant. Yes, you. I like you. Textures are glitched, but yeah, we have lubricant. Oh, and by the way, something that I just realized is that uh, this is adjustable, right? The kerosene lamp. And apparently, uh, you can give it a comparative redstone signal. I mean, maybe you can adjust the range with the strength of the redstone signal. If that is so, it's going to be incredibly cool. Anywho, that's not very important. The important thing is, now we have speed upgrades. Half a stack of them. So if we give it to the compressor, you're gonna go crazy, right? Yes. Yeah, the heat is going up. So nice. With one compressor. But it's also going to heat up and these heat sinks are not gonna be enough. Uh, we'll fix that, don't you worry. But just to test, here is one bucket of kerosene and we're going to set you to maximum blocks. Ooh, that's far more efficient than oil. Very cool. So all of that is nice, now we need to have better tubes and for that we're going to need the assembly line. I went up ahead and made the parts for the assembly line and we had barely enough PCB. And I just wanted to show you this. Uh, this is an analog lever from Create and if we flick it, do you see that? <laughs> this is amazing. Just wait. <laughs> I love this. Basically, we would be able to dim the lights. Why am I down here? Also, I was trying some pipes from Ad Astro and unfortunately, they don't have a great texture. They look nice, but the texture is weird. So instead, we just use the pipes from Immersive Engineering for decoration. Anyways, the assembly controller, the assembly platform, the drill, the laser, export. This is of course a very temporary setup. We just want a few more tubes. That's it. Nothing else. Oh, we had an ender gate. Okay, you go there. Oh, you can take only five bars. Ew, that's dangerous. We turn you off. Anyways, the first thing that we have to do is to buy the program. You know, drill and laser. One day, I'm gonna shoot that drone. Or this one, I don't really care. In the recent version of Pneumatic Craft, you also have a reinforced pressure tube, which is like a mid-tier between the advanced and the basic. This one requires plastic, but I don't think it's worth it because it's like 10 bars. That's it. And as you might have been noticing, making the good ones is not that difficult. I guess for the moment we can have our input, output, we drop the garbage inside, here is your program, and here are some speed upgrades. That was fast, but very good. We're getting the advanced tubes. 
Oh, it gives you 16. Nice. Oh no, it just gives you 8. My bad. I have been working on this place for a while. We have a reservoir for the different fluids that we're getting, which I like them. And I'm using immersive engineering pipes. Uh, they don't really do anything. We're using entangled blocks. Uh, these are just for decorations. And I think the refinery itself is also fully insulated. I'm not sure if these windows count or not, but if they don't, I don't really care. They look nice. And besides, we're not really aiming for efficiency. Also, this stupid wall is empty and I have nothing to put there, uh, so let's put some fake piping. And fake piping is piping that goes nowhere. It's just there so that you have something on the wall. We can have a few valves and, you know, separate them with a hammer. Exactly, it's not supposed to do anything, but at least there's something on that wall. Not that the other walls are perfect, but don't you worry, we have a few gizmos that we have to install. For example, the assembly line. I think we would be able to cover the assembly line like that. And yes, I do understand we don't have any access to the input or output, but we have entangled blocks. And I really have a massive system for it, so you're going to be the assembly line. Uh, just out of curiosity, what are the items that we need from the assembly line, apart from the tube? Okay, these are nice. I like them. Ah, actually, technically, your main job is to make PCBs. But we buy them, so who cares? Therefore, the patterns can go in. And yes, I forgot the program. But at least we should be able to give it a test. Um, will you work? Does it even go in? Yes. Is it the wrong side? Yeah, exactly. It should work. We're getting air pressure. It should start working. Yes, yes. Finally. Perfect. <laughs> of course, items at this very moment are not being imported into the system, so... Yeah, one more entangled block. Let us take a very small break from pneumatic craft and try to move on. There are a few things that I want to try out with different mods. The problem is, uh, we don't really have anything else to automate. I mean, basic resources, we already have them. Potentially, there could be some cool things that we would be able to do. The problem is that we can't just go and check out a mod. There should be a goal. So maybe we are going to try and get the old mod star? I'm not really sure. Because, you know, that's at least the goal. I'm still not sure about the antimatter part, but we can try something. I just mentioned all the mod star, but what we are going to do at this very moment in order to start everything is actually going to be something incredibly basic. One of them is, can you milk a goat? Huh, never knew that. If that is the case, there are a few things that we want from goats. One of them is sewage. I know, shocking. It uses pneumatic craft plastic, that's expensive. Anyways, sewage is taken care of, the other one is milk. So we're going to have an animal rancher. And we do have the professor. Which one of you is the professor? A goat. Yes. This is also nice because it's going to give us some opportunity to expand the base. By a bit. This is the hut that I'm using for filtering my inventory, but maybe we can do it here? You know, with flight, if you have the resources, this takes like 5 minutes. It's garbage, but still. The other ones used to take like half an hour or something crazy. However, the issue is, I just remembered, if you put a goat in a fenced area, he's gonna jump out, right? Especially our goats. There is a boundary of gravity from Mahotsukai, maybe we should use that. We can use honey blocks too, but this is fun. But that's actually quite nice. And cheap. I don't really know where to try this, but here? Nope, I meant here. Yes. It should not affect me, but it should affect the goat who ran away. You need... okay. You know, this mob Junker thing is just the worst. So we put you here, try to jump out. I don't think you can. Really, I don't think you can. Good. That's what we want. Now we come to the fun part, the sewage. So for those of you who don't know, sewage is something from industrial foregoing. You just have to put the sewer under some mobs and you're going to get sewage. That sewage inside the sewage composter is going to give you fertilizer and that's what we want. And the milk is just for me because I want to be able to make wheels of cheese. But if I'm not wrong, we're going to need a few range add-ons. A uh, plus four and maybe a five. With the crazy amount of range that this guy is going to have, I don't really think it has to be centered. Yeah, even though this is sewage, it does require power. Also, I don't really mind if we can have some actual switch in the base. Uh, can we gather a few buckets? And maybe we should change this place a bit. It's an animal pit. It shouldn't have grass. Okay, some good news and some bad news. The bad news is, yeah, the gravity boundary does not stop him that much. It needs to be two blocks high. But I think that's still better because he can jump like six blocks or seven blocks tall. Another bad news that I have is that the sewage actually has to be on the same level as the animal. So I hide it under there. Also, we want to be nice to our animals. But the good news is that we have some sewage. There is a personal shrinking device, right? I need to get down there to show you something. Can I shrink? What are these numbers? <laughs> that is really funny. Anyways, if we go down here, you might notice, yeah, we're getting sewage. That sewage has to go inside the sewage composter, like so. We give you some power, and voila, we have solid sewage. But in line with our policy that we have to be able to turn off everything using a redstone signal, 
let's do that too. <laughs> this shrinking device is fun. I like it. So you're going to run with no redstone. Okay, so switch, toggle. Cool. Oh, and by the way, I have also installed the Animal Rancher. It does have some range add-ons and we're gathering milk. And my dear is King Gamer, you asked for a grave. The professors are going to help you. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.